Now we are going to make scalded cream cheese, which you can use to make such beautiful flowers. This cream uh, tastes practically the same as classical cream cheese. At the same time, it holds the shape perfectly well. It's easy to color and endures heat decently. Look what beautiful, tender, thin petals. What gentle tints. To make scalded cream cheese for flower piping, we need 50 grams of water, 30 grams of cornstarch. Make sure it's cornstarch. Combine cornstarch and water until homogeneous. There shouldn't be any lumps. We keep stirring. It's easy and usually doesn't take much time. Add 100 grams of powdered sugar. Stir the mixture again. I take a small whisk because it's convenient to stir and break small lumps with it. After you mix in the sugar, add 100 grams of cream cheese. I use Hochland. We stir it until more or less homogeneous. You won't make it completely homogeneous. There'll be some lumps of cream cheese left, but it's okay. Look, uh, there are such lumps left, but it's not a big deal. Cream cheese will disperse when we heat and boil our mixture. We put our mixture into a suitable frying pan. It should have a large surface contacting the fire. This way we can boil the mixture faster on this large surface. We put our mixture on medium heat and start stirring it at once. We don't leave it unattended. Stay near and keep stirring. If some mixture runs against the walls, collect it with a spatula. Look, our cream starts scalding. It starts thickening at the bottom, so make sure you scrape the bottom and grab the pieces of scalded cornstarch. Cornstarch scalds and thickens the whole mass. So we constantly stir our mixture. Don't worry about the lumps of scalded cornstarch that float in our mixture. Eventually, they will combine into one bulk of homogeneous thick cream. The cream has already reached the consistency of cooked semolina. Uh, we keep stirring it until we get a thick bulk of cream. It's thickening right before our eyes. Now it comes off the frying pan much easier. Look, the mess now comes off the walls without leaving any traces. It sweeps through the frying pan, uh, but it doesn't leave any traces. Let's take into account that my frying pan is virtually new, so cream moves around it easily. Even if I was making fried eggs, they would move around easily. If your pan isn't brand new and the cream gets stuck a little, pay attention to its consistency. The mess becomes cream-colored. It's semi-transparent and it combines into one bulk. If you boil it longer, nothing bad will happen to it. Your cream will be a little bit thicker, that's all. The longer you boil it, the drier and thicker the mixture becomes. The key point is not to fry our scalded cream. That's it, the mass is ready. It flows down the spatula, but it leaves a trace as any other custard. That's it. We put it into a bowl. I put it into the same bowl that we used to combine the ingredients. It took me 7 minutes to scald the cream. 
Here's what I do to make it cool to room temperature faster. I spread the cream thinly on the walls of the bowl. This way the cream cools much faster. I can leave it like this on the table, but it will cool faster if I put it into a colder room. If it's winter, the balcony will be perfect. The cream spent 15 minutes on the balcony and cooled to room temperature. You can notice that our scalded cream remained pliable and soft. If you let it get too cold, it will turn into a really thick mass. When you add such mass to cream cheese, it will break into large lumps. We need to keep our mass pliable. So, in case it overcools and becomes too thick, simply heat it in the microwave and stir well. Now we'll take 250 grams of cream cheese and combine it with our scalded base. But we'll do it portion-wise. We take a tablespoon of cheese, put it into our scalded base and carefully we don't want to whip it too much. Mix this cream cheese into the scalded cream cheese base on medium speed. Stir it until homogeneous. We don't need to whip this cream, we just need to stir it very well. This part's done. The cream has whitened a little and holds well on the whisks. We have nice thick cream. Now we take this part we have just mixed and combine it with the rest of cream cheese. Then stir it thoroughly once again. If you are a strong, energetic lady, you can do it with a utility whisk. But the mass is quite thick. I'm afraid it will get stuck in the middle of the whisk and it won't be convenient to stir. But it's still possible. We have some undermixed cream on the walls. Uh, let's collect it and stir it in once again. You may over whip this cream. Uh, if you beat too much air into it, the cream will become thinner and won't hold the shape so well. That's it. Uh, the cream is ready. It has a nice tint. Uh, it has some cream tinge, but basically it stands out from other creams for its whiteness. It holds on a spatula very well. It's pleasant, uh, moderately sweet, tender cream. And I think it's less fat in comparison with other cream cheese frostings. Let's test this cream. Uh, we'll make some complex flowers using my favorite piping tips and some tulips, of course. Let's see how this cream takes coloring. We are going to make pale pink color. We start stirring in food color carefully. The food color mixes well with the cream. Uh, let me mix it with the whole amount of cream to see how gentle tints work on it. It's a very beautiful candy floss color. First we'll make some flowers with uncolored cream. So I take a couple of tablespoons of white uncolored cream. Then I put pale pink cream on top. You can make a softer transition of colors if you rumple the piping bag a little. The cream for the flowers is ready. Let's prepare some cream for the greenery. I'll color it in the same bowl that I used to color the cream for flowers. I add a drop of food color and stir it in. I took a large drop, uh, but we will add it carefully, little by little, because if we add 
too much will get intensive brown color. We color our greenery. Uh, here's our green part. We add brown color little by little until we get the tint we need. We mix the cream in stripes uh, to make some splotches of color and put it on the side. Now we collect all this cream. Move the cream closer to the tip with a scraper, keeping the stripes. We are making a peony. Uh, let's see how this cream works. It contains some tiny bubbles, but that's okay for cream cheese. It holds the shape well. Uh, let's see how the petals behave on higher volumes. Right now the cream feels cool, uh, because we added chilled cream cheese to our scalded base. Uh, so the cream is cool now and it holds the petals perfectly well. I feel that the petals hold on the flower safely. Uh, the flower has a deep center and still holds the shape well. The flower itself holds well on the flower nail and I don't have to worry that it may fall off. It's very pleasant to work with it. If the cream warms up in your hands, it will become softer. You can still use it to make smaller flowers, but you won't be able to make large flowers with it. So you'd better work with cool cream. Look how well it holds the petals, even complex ones. We are getting a round peony. Let's open up our peony a little. Now let's add some greenery. Greenery also holds on the flower perfectly well. Let's take it off the flower nail. I think the first test went very well. We are making a rose. We are getting white pink cream now. Let's make a base with it. We'll make a large base so that we could try making a large rose. We make three petals on top. We have a beautiful white edge on the petals. One, two, three. Continue the third one to the bottom. Another petal. I really like assembling a rose with three petals until I get the largest possible size. We can't make three petals here anymore. We simply go on making petals in a circle. We can make the base wider to make a larger rose. We'll make our rose a lady of high degree. We simply put petal after petal. The cream behaves perfectly well. Look how well the petals hold their shape. What a beautiful combination of pale pink and white color. We get ourselves a gorgeous flower. Frankly speaking, even buttercream glaze doesn't always hold the shape so well. I really like it. Let's add some greenery. Uh, we can either make some rose leaves or we can make some oblong sepals. A beautiful rose. We are making a ranunculus. Using our greenery bag, we make a center for the ranunculus. Green cream shimmers a little because it warmed up. It warmed up, uh, so it may be a bit softer than necessary. But nevertheless, it holds the base well. It doesn't teal to anything. I make the center quite high. Uh, let's secure the base. The base looks weird. First we'll get white pink cream here. 
uh, ranunculuses really like transitions of color. So, if you see that one color is about to segue into another color, make a ranunculus. The cream stretches well. Uh, look what an even stretched petal. The main motion when piping a ranunculus is stretching the petal. Oh, air. Uh, we need to cover this. We make some framing petals on one side and on the other side. It holds the shape perfectly well. The petals stretch well. Uh, let's take it off the flower nail. Let's make some tulips of scalded cream cheese. Oh yeah, looks splendid. Let's see how these flowers endure heat. We'll put them into the oven, preheated to 50 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. Let me turn it off first. Have a look. We tortured our flowers in the oven at 50 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. I think the result is more than decent. Some outer petals fell off, but it's still thick. I can lift it up and put it in place. Let's check other flowers. Uh, here the tulip suffered. These flowers are safe and sound, uh, but they are supported by other flowers as well. Even this flower preserved its wholeness. Some petals fell off, but the flower itself doesn't gutter. Well, I think this cream has passed all our tests. Try it out and write your opinion in the comments. In our next video, very soon, we'll decorate a cake with flowers made of this cream.